Jared here from Power Equipment Direct, and this is everything you need to know about portable generators. We're going to show you how to run it, maintain it, and troubleshoot it. We're even going to show you how to connect it into your home. Let's get started. Now we're going to go over some tips and tricks before starting your generator. First things first, always run your generator outside. It should be about 15 feet from your home and any open window or door. This is crucial, I'm telling you. I get a lot of customers that want to run it in an open garage, in a carport, or a shed that has ventilation. Do not run it indoors at all. Carbon monoxide is an odorless, invisible gas that will kill you. You do not want to run this indoors. Please do not. That is the number one thing with any generator. A question that I get a lot is, can I put this in an enclosure or can I add a muffler to it? I know a lot of customers don't like the loud sound of a generator, but these two items are not a good idea. With an enclosure, it can block the wind from an air-cooled generator, causing it to overheat. With mufflers, it's a modification to the generator that can void the warranty. Secondly, you do not want to run this in inclement weather. So it's kind of the catch-22. Usually your power is out during a storm event. You cannot run this in direct rain. They're not waterproof, and the water can actually damage them you're gonna to wanna to get a gen tent. The gen tent is a canopy type cover that protects it from any kind of water and is on the generator while it's running. So it allows airflow to get around it. With portable generators, it's always good to give it a break. The best time to do this is when refueling. You don't wanna refuel a generator while it's hot. You wanna give it about a half hour to an hour break because the fumes on the generator can actually ignite if you're refueling it while it's hot. So another question I get a lot of, can I backfeed my generator into the home? You cannot do this. Backfeeding a generator means that you're plugging the generator into an outlet on your home and feeding it into your breaker box. There's a lot of dangerous things about this. One, the line power from that generator might not be the correct gauge wire, which can cause a fire in your home. Secondly, this is sending power up the line, which is dangerous for the line workers. It's illegal and you can be held liable if one of those workers is harmed. So now we're gonna get ready to start the generator. I've wheeled it 15 feet out. We've checked the gas, made sure it's fresh and good. Checked the oil, made sure there's no leaks on the generator. And we've also changed the spark plug. Just make sure that you kind of check things over. Something as small as not connecting the spark plug wire can cause the generator to not start up. First of all, make sure that nothing is plugged into the generator. You don't want any loads on the generator when starting it. So secondly, we're gonna turn on the fuel valve and we're gonna pull the choke out. Now, if you have an electric start generator, you can put it into the start position, and it would fire it up. Otherwise, put it to the on position and give it a pull. A lot of people have questions on what a choke is and how does it work. Really, it's plain and simple. The choke is a valve on the inside that's going to open and close the throttle to allow less or more air in. When a generator is cold, it needs a little bit more fuel to help it stay running. Once this is done, you can push in the choke, which will open it up and let it come up to speed. Some of the newer generators out there will have an automatic choke. Then you do not have to adjust it at all. The automatic choke is a spring-loaded system that works off of temperature. Now, an issue that I have seen in certain occasions is that spring will take a little bit to actually come back and people have trouble restarting the generator if they've shut it down and it has not cooled. Now let's talk about connecting to your generator. One of the simplest, easiest ways of doing this is with an extension cord. But you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that extension cord is the correct gauge for the power you're using. As you can see, this is a 16 gauge cord, which is pretty small. This is a 10 gauge cord, which is much, much larger and can handle a lot more power. Another important thing about cords is the length of the cord. Connecting two cords together is a big issue. You don't want to do that. Some of them can be a little bit shorter and not be the correct gauge for that distance. This is going to make you bring that generator a little bit closer to your home and have to run it in through a window or a door, which allows that carbon monoxide in. The other problem with that is if you decide to close that window or door on the cord, over time, it's going to cause it to break or fray, which can cause a hazardous condition in the long run. So the last point I wanna make about cords is with extension cords, you're never gonna get the full amount of power out of the generator. 
it's only going to plug into one of the 120 volt outlets, which you're limited, and that's only going to allow you 15 to 20 amps, if that. Now this generator produces much more than that, which is leaving a lot of power on the table. I recommend using a convenience cord. This is going to allow you to plug into your 30 amp outlet and give you four 120 volt outlets on the opposite end. Not only is this a better choice, but it also helps you balance the load on the generator. This is a much easier way of going about it than having to run multiple extension cords out to your generator. So another great solution is a through the wall kit. This is going to bring power into your home with six outlets on the opposite end and uses an inlet box to feed the generator power. This can be placed pretty much anywhere in your home and even comes with the drill bit to drill through the siding. Now this solution is very nice because even the average Joe can install it on their house. So with the through the wall kit, you're going to get your outlets, the wiring to the outlets, your conduit, an inlet box, and it's also even going to come with the drill bit to drill through the home. So I'm going to show you how to connect these up. Once you've got the generator up and going, this is how you connect an extension cord. So when connecting your convenience cord, you're going to use the large 30 amp outlet. Now this is a twist lock outlet, and there's going to be a particular almost L-shaped prong on that cord. You're going to want to match this up with the L-shaped outlet on your generator. Once you plug that in, give it a twist, and now it's locked in. Now when you unplug this, it's not going to just pull right out. You're going to have to give it a twist counterclockwise and then pull it back. Now if you connect into your generator and you're not getting power out of it, make sure that all of the circuit breakers are depressed and in and not popped out. Next thing is you'll have GFCI on your 120 volt outlets. Make sure that these are in the reset position and not in the test mode. So I've showed you a few cords that are great for 120 volt items in your home. But let's say you've got a 240 volt well pump. You're not gonna be able to just plug into this generator and run that item. That's where a manual transfer switch comes in handy. Today we're gonna to show you how to connect into that through an inlet box and how it functions. So when connecting to a manual transfer switch, you're gonna have an inlet box on the outside of the house and a cord going from that inlet to the generator. So we're at a home with a professionally installed manual transfer switch. That is the number one thing. You wanna make sure that an electrician does this install. We do not recommend you installing these manual transfer switches. On the outside of the home, you're going to have a NEMA 3R outdoor rated inlet box, which is where you plug the generator into. What you're going to do is start up the generator, plug this cord into the inlet box, and that's going to feed power from the generator into the manual transfer switch. Once the generator is up and running and you've got your 30 amp twist lock cord, you're going to connect that cord into the generator. This is how it connects.